Okay, as you saw from the intro, this is a get ready with me. Just a heads up. This is, um, let's see, it is, hello phone, 4.56 in the morning. So I am getting ready before work. This is my work makeup. Um, the other thing I'll add is that I actually had my transmission blow in my car and I have not got it back yet. Drove that car 10,000 miles, had 65,000 miles total. It is the second Ford vehicle that I've had this happen with, so I will not be buying another. But because she's driving, I cannot run late. I cannot have anything. So if you see me starting to pick up the speed or you see me skip some steps, that's because I had to like go off camera and hurry it up or whatever. Um, I have some very new makeup in here, and then I have some very unnew makeup in here. So you will see things that are currently um brand new in the the makeup world and you'll see some that have our old favorites etc etc i think everything in here i've paid for except for i think one thing was a free gift if i remember correctly so everything sh i should have um paid cash for or however you want to say it really quick if you watch my pn challenges i did officially finish my watermelon burst by Siete London. This is a primer. I had just like the smallest amount when I filmed that video and just a couple uses, it is gone. It looks like there's a little bit in the bottom right there, but I cannot get it out and it wouldn't be enough for like an actual primer or anything. So this is gone, just a heads up. So I do my eyes first and then I work outward. I have been using the same combo, I think for like six months now. So this is the MAC paint pot. And then I set my eyes when I set them. I don't always set my eyes. This is the Tasha powder. I don't know if, if you haven't seen my post, like all the stickers and everything have come off this. And uh, there was the sunscreen did that too. And the sunscreen was actually amazing. I really love the sunscreen, but unfortunately it did come off on your hands while you were trying to put it on. It was bad. So I just take turns using these little like um, concealer brushes in my, because I, I have nails, I can't go in that. Um, I just take turns, they usually only last before they get goopy, about three to five days, usually in the lower end. And so I just do that. And I am gonna have a little mirror here because I am not good at using, doing it through the viewfinder. And my standing mirror is in the way of the camera. So I put it all on, because I do have sunscreen on, it does get a little like weird for a minute. So I put it all on and then I blend it in. If I don't blend it in, then typically it doesn't um, settle into the skin right. It's almost like, first of all, if I ever put too much in a certain area, I can't tell because I didn't physically touch it until I start doing my makeup and it never fails. Then it like messes up the base, you know, your um, transition shade or just make sure eyeshadow not look good. So I always like to, to kind of blend that in. This is the pink pot. I've been using this entire year. And if you look, there's a lot gone, but it is got a lot left too. So I actually um, think these last a really long time. I have a whole container of eyeshadow primers and I always end up going back to this. So it's just kind of one of those things that I, um, Sorry, my eyes are, I'm still sleepy. It's one of those things that I just keep going back to and I'll grab an eyeshadow primer and I'll have some other sort and I'll use it and then I go right back to it again. It's just what I do. I'm actually gonna pull some of these out and move them out of the way so I can see. So if you see my caboodle back here, I actually use that. I don't usually do my makeup at my vanity anymore. I used to, but what I figured out was the coloring or the lighting in here is not right and so I'll, I'll think my makeup looks fantastic and then I'll go somewhere else and I'll be, like, I'll be like what the hell so I actually do my makeup sitting on my bed where I can open my blinds and have natural light and it just works out a lot better now at five in the morning I'm not gonna have natural light anywhere but out there it's still better than in here because there's something about the vanity light mixed with the overhead light that messes it up and I forgot to smooth my crease there oops I think I did that on both sides usually went for I powder I smooth any creases out so that it doesn't prevent 100% because I'm 45 and I get creases, but it just helps. So that is how I prep and prime my eyes when I'm gonna need my makeup to last more than just eight hours and I need, or I'm using something I know just doesn't stay or whatever the reason is, I won't set my eyes because it does make a difference when I don't set my eyes because the it sticks to that, you know, creamier, consistency by the way I did wear my hair wavy today I naturally I used to have straight as more hair like it wouldn't even hold a curl now my hair naturally waves ever since I've been in perimenopause I have no idea I didn't know that was a thing but I guess other women have told me it's definitely a thing so I try to whenever I can wear it 
wavy and not actually curl it. It's always better for me. Other women in perimenopause and in menopause have told me that it's, your hair texture definitely changes. So it's kind of interesting to me that of all the things that are happening right then, it also messes with your hair. For me, it's kind of a blessing because then I don't have to, to straighten it and all the other stuff that I have to do. So for my eyeshadow, I am doing a Sigma and this is the Sigma Spicy Palette. I actually got this free in a Sigma order. So it, um, it has been pretty the whole time. I just, for some reason, I've never used it. And I've had it a while. I think because it's so warm, I don't typically lean towards warm. I wear a lot of cool eyeshadows, which I just realized all my blush today is cool. Hmm, what do I want to do here? Give me five. I'm going to find a cooler eyeshadow. Okay, I actually love, I have two of these by NYX. And they actually have really amazing eyeshadows. Um, I was kind of surprised because I actually owned that Ultimate Utopia forever before I used it. And then when I used it, I was like, oh my god, that is amazing. Why have I not used that? So I am going to try to grab two coolish colors in here. Um, they're actually down over here. If you look, this is pretty warm over here. Over here, there's like this little hot spot of cool. So I actually think I'm going to do the shade right there. And I'm going to do the one of these two pinks up here is what I'm going to do. I actually got this palette. It's kind of funny. Okay, so Utopia I got at um, Ulta when I worked there. So I had the Ulta discount. This one, the Ultimate Queen, I went on Nyx's website to buy something. I can't remember what it was, but they were having this huge sale when I went to buy a certain item. It probably was my eye um brow gel because I really like one from them but I saw I got this for like I think $11 or $12 and I got this other palette for $4.95 now mind you there's this many shades in this thing and it's actually pretty amazing quality I have seen that palette full price after I got it so it was some special deal that they had that that's why they had it that price Okay, so I'm just kind of making sure that my transition shade or my base shade has got a good shape. I'm just making sure it's not got um, any uneven or patchy places. Now the next step is one that I do every single day when I do my makeup. I probably don't know one person in the world that does this. Not to say that no one does it. I know people I'm sure do it, but it's something that I just discovered on my own as I did my makeup that helps me. I do take, this is currently being panned. I do take my ambient lighting palette. I don't know if I can even see anymore which one this is. Yeah, it's totally rubbed off on the back. So this is my ambient lighting palette. I take that middle shade and I have a Morphe Jeffree Star brush like the old style. I've been using these until they wear out. Jeffree Star and Jaclyn Hill of this particular white type because they don't last. They spray out. They don't keep born. I mean, there's they don't last long term. So I've been using these for this and it actually helps me with the blending. So I get a little bit of that whiter shade. And then what I, this is what I do up here to blend the edges and kind of put a little bit of glow on my brow bone without making it totally a highlighter shade. And I do have to go back and forth between both of them a little bit because that brush is a little bigger. So sometimes it can disrupt the very top layer, but it's easily fixable, takes two seconds. And I'm gonna do the other side. And it, again, it just does that top blending so there's not a harsh line and it puts that glow on the brow bone. Go back over. Actually, this side didn't mess up hardly at all. I love it when that happens. This side is my ugly side. And I don't mean like I'm ugly on that side. I am left-handed, so when I reach across this way, everything seems to do worse on this side. So my eyeliner is usually worse on this side. My makeup is usually worse on that side. Drives me crazy. Okay, so that is the base. I am going to add a shimmer really quick. Um, there's like three shimmers in this area. I actually think... It's these three, so it goes one, two, up, and then over. I think I'm gonna do this one right here. I like in the morning for work, just super easy looks. It's just so nice just to have that, you know, it took me not that long to do it, and it's just gonna stay looking okay all day. Sometimes when I do my crazy looks, they don't last all day, right? We also are hybrid. I work um, majority of days from home, but I do go in the office one or two times a week. I'm getting a, a wipe. I don't use wipes every day all the time. One thing I use wipes for is when I do have a glitter 
that has some fallout. So I got these from um, Amazon and I use them when I'm traveling. If I had to do my makeup like at work before, if I had to drive to work and then do some makeup or touch up or whatever, I have one of these at work. And then I use them once in a while if I have one that has pretty good fallout underneath. Because I'm filming in particular, I do want to make sure that I get all the fallout. And then it's also, I either use this or a Q-tip to shape the end of my eyes. So that way the I don't have to do it later after my foundation is on or anything else. I've already getting it lined up and cleaned up. This one actually doesn't have as bad a fallout as I thought. I think it would have been difficult to, to spot clean no matter what, but it wasn't like terrible, which I have to say is good because NYX typically they're glitters because they actually, for it being a drugstore, not all of them, it's not across the board, but a lot of their glitters are really good. So, okay, that is the eye makeup so far. I do want to grab my eyeliner really quick. So I've actually been using my, this is by Too Faced, it's the Better Than Sex eyeliner. I actually, this has been my holy grail for years until I found the Ariana Grande. The Ariana Grande, I've already used one whole one and rebought. I'm just doing a super thin line um, in the front of my eye and then I thicken it just a little bit as I go to the back. I've not been wearing wings lately. Ever since I used the, uh, um, Latisse on my eyelashes. My eyelashes are very long and I have a lot of them. And when I do a wing, I swear it looks so weird ever since then. But um, the Ariana Grande is very black. Like it's matte black. It looks so good. This one is like almost, depending on what you have under it, turns almost gray. So it's definitely one that um, I like and it works well. Ironically though, I bought the brown one because I do love a brown eyeliner every once in a while and it did not work well. I don't know if I got a dud. I don't know if because the colors, they're different. I don't know what the deal is. Okay, that line's a little thicker than I prefer it for my regular looks, but, um, and there's a little tail I need to fix really quick. The whole while I was talking about not adding a wing, I was having a little tail on my eyes. So just want to make sure I wipe that away because if it's not perfect then it drives me crazy all day. I don't know if anybody else is like that but literally if I put a wing on my eyes and then it's not equal I will stare at it all day. Awesome. So these are my eyes so far. I do not do my mascara or anything else till later because I like to use a lot of setting spray and that makes your mascara not last as long and it can make it be kind of almost like goopy and start to touch and wet things. I mean also it's not worth it to me. So that is one of the last steps that I do. Same with my inner corner and everything else. I do all my base, get everything done and then I go back and finish my eyes. So I I have just my skincare on. I'm wearing the e.l.f. new that's kind of the dupe for the Goop um, glow screen. I'm wearing that one today for my sunscreen. I am going to put a little bit of this on just because I find this helps my skin smooth and just be moisturized. I really don't use that much. Um, that is for my whole face and neck. And so it's something that I use this every day, but I don't use a ton of it. However, this is the only one that I put all over my face. I use a couple primers but I put them in different areas where I need what their feature is. This one's funny. So it doesn't like make your pores disappear type of smoothing. It just literally makes your skin feel smooth. And I swear it makes foundation go on easier. I probably will rebuy this even when it's gone. I'm going to use some primers up, but this is one that, first of all, First Aid Beauty for dry skin is just like your best friend. And next, I'm going to add a really small amount of this one, and this is the NYX Marshmallow Primer. This is a dupe, in my opinion. I have not seen anybody else talk about it, but I've used them next to each other for the Tatcha Silk Canvas or that new e.l.f. Um, I literally take that much, if you can see it, and all I do is put this in where um, I have more, like, pore issues, or um, it just needs a little oomph. That's the only place I put this. If you put this all over, it, it actually works, but it's too much product to put it, this all over and the other one all over. So why I'm panning that, I'm using, actually I'm panning both of these, I'm getting to use the stuff I'm panning and it actually looks really good on my skin. So that one I'm gonna put back in my panning drawer because these two actually both, because they're being panned. Then I do my milk, and my milk I is the same thing. I use it in a specified area. That's all I'm going to use, if you can see it. Hopefully you can. It's like the smallest divot, but I'm using it every day. I lose makeup off my chin. So I always put this on my chin right here. And make sure you let this sit for like 60 seconds to 120 seconds before you put anything on it. Because if you don't, it can goop or pill. doesn't mean it will. 
that I put on my nose, it doesn't mean it will for sure, but it just is more likely if you don't let it dry first. I find as long as I let this dry, it usually looks really good. Sorry, keep pulling my mirror too high. I apologize. Um, and then I usually put it in this area. I probably lose more makeup on my upper lip than I do anywhere else when it's wearing off. So next thing I'm going to use is the Becca Under Eye Corrector. I actually am painting this. Um, it was brand new when I opened it. It had been sitting in my drawer for a really long time. Um, it was never opened, but it had been there sitting there probably a year or close to it. I don't think longer than that, but I just take my um, concealer brush. This is a um, Angie Hot and Flashy, but I also have Sephora's. They're the angled brushes. I think these work really good for concealers. I typically, the amount I grab out of the jar, I can use on both eyes. So I get enough that I can blend in this color corrector on both sides to the point that I don't have to touch them again until I blend in my concealer. I got lucky today. Every once in a while, my um, using my concealer brush doesn't like blend properly and I end up having to use my sponge as well, which is super annoying and it makes me irritated as hell because I like using the brush because the brush gives the most coverage. And as soon as you bring the sponge in, it, it reduces the amount of coverage that's there. So then I end up using more product to compensate for the sponge using more product. It's frustrating. So the foundation that I'm using today is the Spanishbox Always On. This is relatively new. I mean, it's kind of brand new, I guess. I think I've only had it for a couple weeks. But um, it came out and I've seen, if i seen, <sighs> English is easy when you're wide awake. When you're sleepy, it's not. Um, I've seen a couple people talk about this, but I've actually not seen anybody do a review that was like specially for that, like a wear test or anything else. So I'll try to remember to give you guys a couple updates with my cell phone. Like I can do an unnatural light or artificial light at work and I can do one outside at work. But this is one that I personally have found that I haven't had it actually mess up much at all. Like it's been pretty amazing. What I do is I kind of put it on and get it started. And then I go back in with my brush and you know, spread it out, make sure it's good. I find this method, although I personally find it a little irritating, I'm one of those people that likes to use a spoon brush or my fingers, not all three, but I have found that my foundation looks better when I actually do this. There's something about it that just helps it. And again, I have no idea why. It sounds kind of stupid to me in a way, but might need more on my neck, but um, I've been I think I've been using this um, It Cosmetics, but I actually think that one is done. I need to go to another brush because the um, it gets, after a while, the foundation almost makes the brushes kind of goopy, and so that's what it's feeling. So I am using my uh, BK Beauty 101. I actually have two of these. This is like my favorite um, foundation brush. And so I like to just kind of get it, I don't like a, a thick layer, so when I put it on, I don't add much on my brush. I use what is on my face to get the brush going. And I find that sometimes I have to add more, but a lot of times the brush actually helps spread it and make it look good. In this area of my chin and my upper lip, I literally try to put the least amount possible because I find that the um, those areas are the fastest to get cakey and the fastest to have problems. Typically, no matter what foundation or method brush sponge hands I use, I end up with foundation loss on my cheeks. So I do usually have to go back and um, touch those up no matter what I use. My nose never holds foundation. It's kind of funny. So I put it on every single time. It never stays, it like separates, does whatever it does. And then I put concealer on it and that's how I actually get my nose to be covered. It's so dumb, but for some reason, my whole life that's been a problem. If you go back in some of the older videos, you'll hear me talk about foundation doesn't stay on my nose and I hadn't figured that out yet, the concealer trick. So, um, like I think this looks good overall. I just need to add a little bit on my apples. So it's got relatively good coverage too. I don't consider this full coverage by any means, but I would definitely consider this medium. Um, I can build it to the point that it covers any like freckles, anything like that. I am going to do, I do a cooler bronzer or cooler contour first, then I do my bronzer and then I do my mascara and my blush. So for my cooler, I am using the Oma Beauty stick that does look like this. This is what I'm panning and I'm so excited. Look, you can't see it. It's finally below the end. So this is very um, emollient. It's very easy to blend. I really like it. It does a really good job. 
try to keep my mirror down because I suck at this. I haven't done a get ready with me in a really long time. Like, I think it's probably been years. My biggest struggle when I do these is one, it can become hard to edit because you don't want to leave a step out that somebody helps somebody. But then also you can't have a four hour, not literally, but a hour long video because people are not going to watch the whole thing, especially with short term content. I'm putting this in my um, hand drawer because that's where it's from. My, um, this is the Anissa bronzer brush. If you look, it's very like this. I have never seen a brush that can blend like this one. It's so amazing. It just really does a great job. And it's like, Everything's blended in and it actually makes your skin look smoother. It's so weird how good it is. When you're editing and you're trying to leave things in, it's really hard to decide what is important and what should be left out. And I end up getting like decision paralysis or analysis paralysis because I don't know which parts can just be left out. Like, because there's always those people that only want like the face and don't care about the eyes. There's those people that care about the eyes and don't care about the face. And then there's those people that want to see every single step, no matter what, even if you're not like a makeup artist, they want to know how you do every step. And then there's those people, well, you should skip the brows. You should skip this. So I feel like I start editing and I get like this decision issue that it's hard for me to decide and then roll with it. So I end up not posting it or I end up editing it too much or not enough. And so I just need to find a good method. So if you look, the, all that did is just bring my cheeks in a little bit and it gave me some chin definition. That's all that does. It's not meant to do a lot. It's not supposed to do a lot. My bronzer, I am not painting this anymore, but I'm still using my um, Mario. This is the Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer. I do have a relatively large pan. Funny thing is there is a huge dip by that pan. This, because of this, the thing does not fit over there, so I'm now pushing on the other side. This one is probably either the easiest or one of the easiest bronzers that I've ever blended. This foundation does pretty much dry down. Like when I'm touching myself right here, it's tacky, but it's not moving anywhere. Another thing I find with this one is my hands, like you see me tapping right there, it's actually pulling the foundation off because it does dry down. So like normally I would be able to like move it around and fix it. This one you are not able to. So that's probably the only negative I've found so far. What I was saying is this one is like the easiest bronzer I've ever had to blend. Um, it's literally making my skin and perfecting my skin when I do this. Like every time I tap it, it's smoothing out foundation things, issues or um, hot spots or whatever. And it makes such a difference in my um, makeup. And it's funny because the only reason I bought these is because Taylor Wynn and some other people were talking about them. And I have plenty of makeup brushes. Last year on Black Friday, I, I bought BK Beauty, who I adore. Those are my favorite brushes. And so I had no intention of buying these. They had a 50% off sale. So I bought four brushes because I could get them for the cost of two. And I have to say, I am not regretting them. They are amazing. My bangs are almost grown out. They're like down to here right now. So when I wear my hair curly, they don't get enough curl or wavy, not really curly, wavy. They don't get enough curl. So I do have to put them up. So it's kind of frustrating at times because I have them all up and like out of the way when it actually, sometimes I would like to wear them down. But when I do it curly, it's just not a thing. It's not going to happen. Okay. So we are done with foundation. We are done with Mario. Set those aside. Next, I'm going to do my concealer. I've been wearing these two concealers, not necessarily together, but I've been wearing them almost every day since I got them. This is the Too Faced Ethereal in Oatmeal, and this is the 1.5 um, Makeup Forever HD 1.5 R. I adore these. Both of them are light coverage. Together, they get like a light medium if I use a color corrector, I'm fine with that. I don't care if my dark circles show somewhat, meaning I don't want to look like I got a black eye. But on the other hand, which it varies. Today, I actually didn't think they were that bad. They covered relatively easy. Sometimes if I don't have sleep, I'm in a lupus flare up, things like that, they can look a lot worse. So I'm going to start with this. You'll see I don't use a lot of county found. I don't use a lot of concealer, but I use more, like I use more than one, but I use really small amounts. Like if you look, that's all I did in the center. And then this one I'm going to put out here. And that's it for Makeup Forever. Unless I determine I need more, then I can. But you start off with a really small amount, and then you don't have to worry about trying to figure out where to put it all. I do the center with the, the 
Too Faced. Both of these are pink toned um, concealers and I personally find that that's what works best for my eyes. I'm actually going to go in my drawer and I'm going to grab my pan drawers right here. I'm going to grab the um, Apple, Good Apple Concealer. I'm painting this right now. I'm going to use this for my nose because I know for a fact this works well. Although my nose is looking better. Just a little bit down here. And then I like to let it sit for just a minute. So I'm going to let this sit. Okay. So I let those sit. I still do my eyes last. So I go in and I, this is a BK Beauty 110. And this is actually a concealer brush. Despite it has a different shape than a lot of them do. So I just want to make sure that that's all blended. And for me, I don't really worry about brush strokes. I mean, I don't like them. But if I get a couple, it's no big deal. Because I do go over my face with my um, sponge before I spray. I actually didn't do it today because the primers were looking fantastic and they were blending fantastic. But a lot of times I actually do setting spray over my um, primers just to help everything blend. Something on my nose is reacting to things because it was looking better and now that I've done this, it's reacting again. And it's not like brush strokes, it's like actually separating. So then I go in. And I just start smearing out my concealer. A lot of my concealer I will still do with my sponge. So I just get it kind of where I want it. And then I bring the sponge in. And I think that really helps my under eye not look cakey. Like I think if I stopped here, it would look kind of cakey. But it gives it the best coverage by doing this first. And then also the sponge will help blend my foundation and my concealer so they're not a line there. I cannot stand that line. And when it's noticeable on other people, I find myself staring at it. This is where I'm gonna grab my sponge. I just wanna explain really quick. So I use a towel with my sponge. This is my sponge. I wet it a lot when I first start. And then I go with the sponge and I squeeze out so that there's no like super wet spots in it. Okay, that's better. So this is a um, Sonia, Sonia Keshek, I think. No, Sonia Keshek is the one that's at, I think this is, Sonia G or something like it's the one from Target. I can't I always mix those two up for some reason and I am just smoothing everything out. I do my eyes first because that's the freshest product on my face so I always try to do that first and then I work out from there. And I do have to kind of be careful with this foundation. I guess that's one of the other it's related to the other negatives the only ones I found so far is because it can pull up your foundation I don't want a dry sponge, but I also want to make sure I'm taking my time and not rushing it and trying to like smooth versus tap, things like that. It just makes it look better in my opinion. I do typically go over my whole face even if I don't notice an issue somewhere. Yeah, that looks good. One of the reasons I do my concealer first before I do anything else too is because it puts just some of the foundation. No matter what you do, sponges are gonna soak up some. So then when I move to the rest of my face, it's not pulling it from there. Like I had a little bit of spare in my concealer area, but then it's not pulling it out. So the one last thing I need to do, or last few things I need to do before I powder, is I do need to do my cream um, blush and highlighter. So I've actually been using these as a combo. This is the About Face. This is in Score. And it does look like this. So this is a cool tone purple. And then I've been using it in combination with this. This is from, is it Honest? Yeah, Honest Beauty. And this is Blush Lilac. And it does look like this. So I've been using those together. I use the um, About Face first. And then I use the other one second. They typically do a really great job of um, putting color and making, it's, it's more than a wash but it's not super bright either. And I really like that for my cream. Because I use cream and powder blushes, I always wanna make sure that they are um, not creating what will want a clown face because I've done that and been there, but also that, that they are creating almost like dimension versus just color. Powdering your face dulls like whatever is under it. And so it actually dulls as you do it. So this almost creates like an underpainting, like you, it creates dimension on my cheeks. So I really like it. So that's literally all I use of this one. The Honest Beauty ones are a lot more creamy than that one. That one is more potent or more pigmented, but it's easily blendable. It blends with foundation really easy. I've never had an issue with it. I've only had it 
God, not even a month, I don't think. For my birthday, I got some gift cards, and then I spent some money at Ulta. And then yesterday, actually, my daughter sent me a gift card for my birthday. My birthday was a little while ago, but she didn't have the money then, which I don't care if my kids send me gifts. Like, if they don't want the money, that's fine. But she's a cutie pie, so she always thinks she has to, so she's always sending something. And if it had been cash, I would have just sent it back, but the cards you can't refund, so here we are. So um, I've been getting some things, and I'm actually going to call my butt the down because... I've probably spent too much. See how this one I actually use less and it's not pigmentation because if you look, it's, it blends in really well and, and actually kind of disappears. If I keep tapping, it will absolutely disappear. It will not be there. So I have to uh, try to walk that line. I do try to go across my nose. So I take some of that as I'm using it and go across my nose. Again, I will use my sponge one more time before, so it will soak up a little bit. But um, these aren't unpigmented. It's just that those are more pigmented, but that style of cream bronzer, it's almost like a balm. It's harder to get off the thing, whereas this is easier. So I always have to like balance that. My left cheek has a little bit more than I normally would use. But again, I'm not really worried about it because between the sponge and then the powder, it will balance it back out. So my cream bronzer or my cream highlighter I've been panning, I think this entire year, it is my entire year. So this is the Hourglass. This is in rose gold. It does look like this. It's like I these things last like 10 years. Now mind you, this is a cream bronzer that I got in BoxyCharm a while ago. It, for all intents and purposes, should be expired right now. It still works great. I have never had a problem with it. It literally works fantastic every time I use it. However, I do know that you know, at some point it's not going to be good. So I'm just trying to use as much as I can before that happens. How sore my throat is. So I'm going back with the sponge on the side. I can see the foundation on because I want to just blend all this together again. Make sure my bronzer is blended well and there's no line there. Like I swear sometimes if you don't pay attention, you can end up with like an outline of your face. And it's so obvious that when you go to powder it or anything, there's like no fixing it. So that is the face before I powder it. I'm gonna get rid of some of these cream ones. I actually forgot to use, I used it my other one, but I also have the Anissa um, uh, brush for con concealer. I can't talk all of a sudden. Br Anissa brush for concealer. I'm actually gonna use that. It helps me smooth out my lines. Amazing. It really is truly, really good at that. I'm gonna put that over there. So under my eyes, I'm gonna use my hourglass. I'm painting this. It's also an amazing powder. So I just pour a little bit in the lid. And then I actually use puffs like this. I got them off Amazon. You get like a 10 pack relatively cheap. But first I go with my Anissa and I try to smooth as much as I can because I do have some lines no matter what. I've had lines since I was a teenager when the whole like no lines and no creasing underneath the eye came out. I tried so hard and this eye, I actually can get pretty close. The other eye will crease no matter what. I want to do this one. Now I tap it in the powder, but that's a lot of powder, right? I go in the back of my hand and I tap off a lot, like a lot, lot. You only need a little bit. So I'm tapping again because I'm changing puffs and I'm going to tap off the back of my hand. This area in between my forehead, I find if I do this technique, it doesn't get that ugly, like wrinkly thing that can happen. My Danessa Myricks, I'm going to see if this works better. Um, for some reason, this is like separating under my eyes and, and the like right here, when I rubbed it out with my finger after I powdered it, it did look better, but I have not, I've never had that happen with that powder ever. So it makes me kind of nervous. This one is um, like a skin tone shade. It's uh, number two. It's a little bit yellower than I would prefer it, but I'm still gonna tap that out. Sorry. I find that Danessa Myrick's powders, which they're relatively cheap considering what other places charge for them, are really well at fixing mistakes and going over errors. I don't know what she does with this stuff, but I've had multiple times where I was having a problem with a foundation and I went over it with a Danessa Myrick's powder and it was so much better. Okay, I'll try to insert a clip of me cleaning this the hell up because it's, I have never in my life had this happen. It literally separated all in this area right here. So I removed all the foundation and powder underneath my eyes and up through my nose and into this area and then I redid it. So I do have to start my powdering over. So here we are. Let me check the time because it is before work. 
okay, I'm okay right now. I am not going to use that hourglass again, even though I will point out I use that hourglass with this foundation like five times now. Um, it makes me nervous because I don't have time to keep redoing this because I am going to work. So I just dumped the powder back into the hourglass container and I am putting that aside. So I know my dead ass and my Ricks does a really good job. So I'm actually going to lead with that. I even tried the glowish powder just in between my eyes to see if I could fix it. And unfortunately, it did not do anything. So I'm actually going to use my Danessa and my Ricks um, for my under eye and for the rest of my face. Um, I just dumped out way too much. But this is one that I actually like. I have the Danessa and my Ricks in the white color. I like this better for under my eyes. So I just grabbed that. Um, it creates a brighter under eye look. Holy cow, this has obviously been on its side. <laughs> Um, it does a better under eye look, in my opinion. Um, it definitely helps to keep things smooth and highlighted and blurred. There's obviously a reaction to this foundation to something I'm wearing underneath. And again, it is the same shit I've been wearing every single day. So it is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Same skincare, same sunscreen, same primers, same foundation. I've been wearing this every day, so I don't know what the deal is, but I am going to try to keep moving. Um, I may end up having to wash my entire face off to go to work, but I am going to try to keep moving and see if it's repairable and see if I can get it to look good. Sometimes I find my foundation will be doing all kinds of crazy crap, and then as soon as I powder, everything kind of comes together, so I'm praying and hoping that that's what happens. If it's going to happen, it will happen with this powder versus another. This powder is just so forgiving and so good. So that is the under eye so far, and I didn't have any reactions with that powder. So I think that that at least helps somewhat. Just doing the inner corner so I can go up into this area again. Okay, I tapped out what I could on that side. Okay, so that's it for the whiter powder, the um, purely translucent, like there's no color here if you look. So that's it for that one. I'm gonna switch back to the one that has color. And I typically do my entire face with very light pressed powder in. It's a loose powder, but I'm pressing it in so that I can not have um, a super powdery complexion. But as you watch, it will take the shine down and it helps my makeup stay all day. I work eight plus hours every single day and I um, need my makeup to last, but two days, one to two days, some days it's one, some days it's two, I go into the office and it's nowhere near my house. So while I could bring makeup, there's no way for me to really like redo my makeup if it's jacked up. So for me, it's kind of important that it's not, that it actually looks good. This is the um, Beauty Blender uh, Poofy that they sell. I've actually had that for a while. It's funny how now it's like becoming like an in thing. I think I've had two of them at least a year. And the other one, like the, the second one is actually probably a year old. I mean, over a year old is what I meant to say. The, ones, the second one's a year old. The first one's over a year old. I find my neck is the hardest thing to get not sticky. And that for me is like the most important because I cannot stand transfer. So for me, it's really important that my neck gets done, but I typically will go back with a brush for that one. I'm reapplying some lip oil. The lip oil softened my lips to the point that my little chap lip pieces were coming off, which it looks gross, first of all. Second of all, I don't want them on there, so I just had to redo it a little bit. There's definitely some areas that look imperfected. They're not perfect, but one thing I do notice is that when I set my setting spray and everything else, any minor imperfections will start to come off. Come off, that's not what I meant will start to blur and that's all. I don't have to look perfect. I kind of look looking human, but I want to make sure that I'm not doing something crazy. You know, I do have been using the Jaclyn Hill. This is a, what do they call this? Brighten up luminous powder. So this is more of a highlighting powder. It's not a setting powder or a finishing, like it could be a finishing powder. I actually mix in the lid my powder and this together and then I just do the high points and I tone it down just enough to make it look really good, but it also adds a little bit of dimension back to your face. I've been using the Anissa powder brush. That one I just used was BK Beauty. This is the Anissa powder brush. It doesn't have a number, it just says multi-powder. So you can use this for bronzer powder, you can use it for face powder, whatever you want. But I, I've been going in with this and just going into my cheeks in my areas like this, my chin, 
And I just really lightly put this on. I like to do my jawline, give it a little light reflecting properties. So I just, like, as you see, I don't put it everywhere, but I put it places I think would need it. And I don't know if it's gonna pick up on camera, but I usually get just a little bit of reflect. It's not a highlighter, but it's got a little bit of something, something that just makes it look good. And that's one of the things I like about this powder. I actually own two of these. I own this one and I own another color. This one I bought when they originally released and all the colors were sold out except for this one for fair skin. So I bought the other fair skin one. I've been using that one too. I actually used to do this every single day and somehow I stopped and I don't know why. So I like to glow like it's the top of the Chrysler building. And if you get the reference, you know, you know. I do actually usually use a setting spray at this point, but I'm not going to do it just yet. I'm going to again go over it with my powder brush make sure there's no excess powder. Then I'm going to do my bronzer and then I will set because sometimes, not all the time, I go to use my setting sprays and then my bronzer does not go on top of it good. So I just want to make sure. So I'm using a powder bronzer. So I am using the Tarte. This is the Park Avenue Princess. This is a luminous bronzer. If you like luminous bronzers, it's fantastic. However, if you don't like luminous bronzers, it's probably not the one for you. So I'm doing my bronzer. I just have my BK Beauty 111 brush. I think this is the um, originals, but it could be this the second thing. They had the original bronzer brush came out and then they had another set came out with a new foundation and a new bronzer brush, I believe. And I think this is from... Actually, it has a short handle, so it's probably from the second one. The um, first ones have longer handles than the second ones, I believe. And then also the foundation one is a lot smaller. I don't personally like that for foundation, but it works really good for cream, like bronzer. And as you can see, there's reflection on my forehead from the bronzer and then also from that powder I used. So I like to be bronzed because I am super fair. I can use most of them out on the market, but the problem is some of them turn orange on my skin. This one is definitely red undertoned. Like you can see it on my skin, it definitely has a red undertone, but um, it just does a great job and I love the luminosity of it. Okay, we are gonna use some setting spray. I can't stand it this powdery, it's gonna kill me. So the first one I'm going to use, you will see really fast, almost like mats it down. It's not matte, but it will look that way. This is the Make It Last SPF sunscreen. I don't care for this one. It does like flatten your makeup, but when you're trying to, it's really nice. But it also has a horrid smell. Like it gets in your lungs. It's like terrible. So I've got like this much left. We're just trying to use it up. So we're going to do this spray first. As you can see, it's like literally was dying while I was doing it. And for fans, I got these off Amazon. I love them when I was a kid. These are what I loved. I had a cousin who was a marine station in Japan. He brought me back one of these and some other stuff. And I swear I kept it and used to like play with it till I broke it. Which when you think about it is funny because why didn't I like save it? But whatever. So if you look, it's much more flat now. It's much more set for lack of a better word. And so I am going to go back in and I am going to spray it with, this is not Pixie Glow Mist. This is actually like three. <laughs> so it has a Rare Beauty, a Gerard Cosmetics, and then I want to think a Fenty, but I might be wrong. I just keep throwing them in here and there's just a little bit of oil left. So it keeps some extra moisture. And those are moisturizing. The Gerard Beauty I've talked about before, those Slay All Days are amazing. I cannot stand the scents and I bought scents, but they work really well. So these three together, I think is a really great one. This is more about making it look good and making it not be as flat. So I don't need as much. And then I also want to make sure I fan this off. Sometimes if I don't fan, I notice it like settles and it doesn't dry well. Take a look, make sure there's no spots that are crazy. So overall, I think it looks really good. I'm going to stop here and do my brows. They have spots make a little bit worse. It took a little bit longer than I planned. I have two blushes. I'm not sure if I'm going to use them both or not. I have the Give Beauty... This is in Moonlit or Honeymoon Phase. It does look like this. This d darker one is super potent. Like I put it on the back of my hand. This is the Jaclyn Hill I talked about in my pan challenge that I bought. It's a lilac blush. I'm actually gonna start with this and then sometimes I've been putting that lighter one on top of it and I'll go from there. I've been loving purple blush, which is funny because I was always taught my whole life that fair people can't wear purple blush, which I swear you turn 40, you don't give a shit about rules anymore. I kind of like going back to teenagers. I didn't care about rules when I was a teenager, and now I'm over 40, I don't care about rules again. I don't use a lot on my chin or my forehead. It's kind of like the leftover. Same with my nose. But I do notice that it kind of connects the look and doesn't look as crazy. 
Again, I don't want it to look blushy. So if I start looking like there's too much, I kind of just go over with my powder blush brush and it will fix it. It definitely needs something else. Like I could stop there, but to me it doesn't like have that look that I want. So I'm gonna go into the give and this has a pretty decent mirror so I can actually use that. I do tap off for this one because it is pretty potent. Even the light one's pretty potent or pigmented. I use potent, I don't know why, because I don't think that really is the correct word for it. But for some reason, that's what always pops in my head. This side needs a little bit more. See, I think that looks cute and then it's not too much you know what I mean so I just want to get it with the sienna lights yeah I think it looks really good so I am going to spray my face one more time before I do my highlighter I notice my highlighter sticks better than I but also I am going to be doing my mascara soon and I won't be able to spray much after I do spray after but you can't do much so I'm actually going to use a different spray this time not because that one's a problem because I'm trying to utilize these so I have the um dewy set by Anastasia this one is dewy set. Like it literally like wets your face and then when it dries, it usually has all your bronzer and powders are blended really well. It's really nice in that regard. Because I use glowy products, I don't typically put highlighter all over my face. I put it in certain areas that I like to, places I put it that I like it. This is the um, Rare Beauty, this is in Mesmerize. So this is like the rose gold one. I am going to take just a little fluffy brush and what I do is I put this in certain areas that I like to have a little bit of reflection. So I put it next to my eyes right here. And this is one that just blends in with the skin. Like it's so pretty. That's it, I probably used a little bit too much, but that's okay. And a lot of times this is what brings the nose in, it like hides any flaws, so that's really nice. So that is all I do for highlighter. I am gonna tightline my eyes really quick and get my eye makeup going, I need to hurry up. Right now it is 6.29, I have a half an hour until my coworker arrives, and I still need to make my coffee and stuff, so, and get dressed for that matter. I mean, I'm dressed partially, but I couldn't put all the rest on because if I dropped any makeup on it, I would have to change, so. That's why I didn't finish completely before coming on here. I will ruin a shirt if it's possible. I mean, I have powder all over this thing, but I will ruin a shirt if it's possible to ruin a shirt. It's just who I am. I accept it. I'm klutzy. I don't know if anybody else out there has any like health issues, but I have um, Ellers Donlos, which in because of Ellers Donlos, I have pots, and it's like a egg before chicken thing because I have lupus, and they're like, well, that can cause you know, autonomic, you know, autonomic issues. But then I also have Ehlers Downlows, which is a hereditary condition and can cause pretty severe issues or be really mild. I have been blessed. I've dealt more with the physicality than the dangerous stuff. So like, for example, I tear tendons easier. I've torn the tendon in my ankle, I think four times. I've torn the tendon in my shoulder. I mean, it's like you typically have those types of injuries or overflex, you can pop out a joint and then you go back to popping a joint and it hurts things. So that is part of the issue with mine. I've been blessed again, not to have worse. There's people out there that have it a lot worse. And then also um, the lupus tends to either be crazy and like putting me in the hospital or absent. Like I never have a consistent, I'm using a gold eyeliner from NYX. This is in gold plated. Just because I have that like sparkly on the top, I'm adding just a little bit of this here. I usually use a white eyeliner before I use this because my inner waterline is so white. I actually can get away with white, but I kind of want to use this because this is like, if you look, it's literally not like, eyeliner eyeliner like if I put black there but it does give like a boundary it's almost it's weird it almost makes like a natural boundary so I do need to curl my lashes um I use Latisse in case you are not aware I actually have been on it almost four months that's the first section of the dose so for four months you use it every single day and then after that you use it every other day just to maintain it and keep it going um I don't know if that's because they'll just grow forever or if because it's not good to use it that much. I'm not really sure. I probably should ask that when I was at the eye doctor, but I didn't think about it. I'm using the Maybelline Sky High Lash Primer. I didn't ask about it. And um, honestly, I'm so impressed with what it's done for my lashes. That I really don't care. It sounds bad, but I have to take so many medications for my um, illnesses and things like that, that it's kind of nice to take one that actually just gives me something awesome. And I love my lashes now that they're longer. That's basically one coat of the primer. 
I don't like the fact that this is dark. I personally like the white primers because it helps me make sure I got every lash, make sure everything was really, you know, primed and ready to go. And I don't like it on my bottom because of two things. One, I find when I wear it on the bottom, I have more transfer and I don't know yet if it's partially like the foundations and this mixing or if it's just this. I haven't figured it out yet. But I used only this one for a while and I kept having transfer. When I brought the white primer back in for my lower lashes, it stopped. So there's something there. Now my, I don't typically have transfer on my top lashes, so it's kind of weird. Okay, that is one coat of primer. I typically try to only do one coat because I do like to use more than one mascara. Today I'm not going to, but normally I do like more than one mascara. I'm gonna do my bottom lash really quick. This is with the Luminous White Eyelash Primer. All this does is help them pop and it helps bring out my eyes more. Um, I have audio or heterochromia. I have two forms of it. I have the form that has, you have two eye colors. So my eyes are green, except for in the top, there's a whole section in both of them that are brown. And then I, and I also have the ring around them. And then I also have the type that has these light reflective qualities that when I wear different colors, it creates different eye colors. So like today I'm looking at my eyes and they look crisp and, and green and just really like stand out as like emerald green. Um, they could change when I put this on because I'm putting on brown mascara, but um, this is the sky high brown. And so I, um, use different colors to or different color mascaras to bring it out I can get gray I can get brown I can get like a deeper almost like not navy blue but darker than royal blue depending which I've learned that there's a reason green eyes can go blue really easy is because there's actually no such thing as an actual green eye it's actually pigments in your eye that, that are yellow which is part of melanin that are going over the blue to create green and that's why people with green eyes can have varying colors all the time is because the pigment can vary um i don't know if the pigment can like die and not be there and give you blue eyes or not because i never thought to ask that but um it is because of the yellow melanin going over the naturally blue eye so i probably have blue eyes but i have that melanin probably the only place i have melanin that's kind of ironic but um that's what it is. So it's kind of neat to think about how these different eye colors are and everything else. I do tan though. It's one thing that's funny is I'm super fair, but I actually tan really well. Um, I have since a teenager used sunblock every day, so I'm not like frying myself, but I get pretty dark. When we have some summers, we go to the beach every single weekend, I get really dark. And then we have other summers like this summer, we have not gone once and I'm like a beach baby. Like I like to spend my whole summer at the beach and we have not gone once, which is driving me crazy. So that is the eyes. I think they came out probably the best part of this look is probably the eyes. My skin doesn't look bad now. I'm actually not mad at it, but it's just not, didn't come together perfect. So my last step that I do is I actually typically do a finishing powder. I do one of two things. Either I take my Laura Mercier, this is the Candle Glow Sheer Perfecting Powder in one does look like this. I have owned this forever. I think it was actually Taylor Wynn again that told me about that one. I didn't use it the whole time I had it and then all of a sudden I started using it and loving it. The other one I do is I mix these two or these two shades over here, the white and the, like the almost like bronzy color. I guess that's bronzy too, but um, I mix these two together and just do the high points. But I am going to do one thing first. I actually like to put something in my inner corner of my eye. So I am using the Urban Decay Single um, Cowboy. I did recently get a pan in it. Yay! I always grab from that same spot so I'm going to get a pan. So if I used it regularly, I probably wouldn't have a pan yet. So I'm just highlighting that inner corner. I think a majority of the world does this now or knows about it at least, even if you don't do it. So it does look like that. So again, I'm gonna use my finishing powder and then I'm I am gonna do my lips and we will be done. I think I'm gonna do the candle glow. I've been liking that one lately and it doesn't make my brush too like weird. Like sometimes if I use a powder like this, I need to use a different brush. And this one doesn't like stay in. It's really nice. It just kind of brings everything together. It is glowy as hell. So if you don't like glow, you will not like this. But I find that instead of having like a strip like that, it's, it blends it all in. And then I'm gonna do one more setting spray just to make sure that it's all in. I'm gonna go back to that when I'm panning because it dulls it down just a little bit. I like to open my eyes immediately so that I don't have my mascara sitting against my face with that on. But what I notice is that it literally, that stuff is so strong that when I try to open my eyes, it like chokes me. 
in the eyeball though. I mean, it like burns, it's so crazy. This lip liner is a little bit warmer and darker than I would prefer, but I had to grab it on the fly. I'm running out of time. It is 6.39 and she's gonna be here in 20 minutes. So I need to hurry up. So I'm actually gonna blot that off a little bit. So it's, it's still there, but it's just not as dark. And then I have an Essex, and that was ColourPop. What color was that? In Field Day. This is just an Essence um, High Shine, and this is in Happiness in a Bottle, which actually, is, I really like this one, so it's kind of cute, actually. Um, I don't buy Essence in store. If you've never talked to me, I'll or realize it. Everyone opens them and fondles them and smells them and touches them. And then they put them back on the shelf and there's no seal to stop it. So I don't ever buy in the store. I buy it when I do an online well, to order or I'll buy from their website. So overall, I'm pretty impressed with this. Uh, considering all the fixing and manipulating I had to do to it to make it look okay, I'm pretty good with it. So I'm going to stop this here. So I'm going to try to do some check-ins. If not, you'll see my outro kick in. But if I remember, you'll see more information here. Okay, this is what it looks like and naturally as I'm heading to work. My lipstick always smears right here. No matter what I do. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know if I got crooked lips, but this is what it looks like. It's not full daylight light yet, but it is natural light. So I'll get some more during the day. Talk to you soon. Okay, so it's the end of the day. I've been wearing this all day. I have one check-in I should have put before this, but this is gonna be the end result. I'm gonna zoom you guys in so we can kind of talk about what I'm seeing. Okay, Whew, holy close up. So one of the things that I'm noticing, let me see if I can not block my light here. <laughs> one of the things I'm noticing is it does look a little cakey right here. And then there's a little bit of cake right here where it's wearing off. And I'm not sure if this is going to pick up on camera. And again, and not as bad as on this side as it is this side. But I would like to point out is look at my forehead. Remember I had to redo that whole section? Like that doesn't look too bad. I do see a little bit of caking or like setting in the lines, but that's about it. And this part got redone a little bit too. So I think if there hadn't been that reaction, I actually think this would have been really good. So let me zoom you back out. Okay, so one of the things I found with this is, and my hair is crazy today. Like I did my natural waves and it, I don't even know what's happening with it, but um, so far this foundation I found usually looks really good at the end of the day, but I thought about something that might have interacted with it. So when I wore this the last time I wore it, I didn't wear the e.l.f. I actually wore the Glow Recipe um, sunscreen. So I'm going to try that tomorrow, exact same combination, but tomorrow I'm going to do the Glow Recipe and I will actually put a tagged comment in this after it posts of what the results were because it's kind of weird to me that I've worn, I think I've worn this foundation probably seven or eight times now in a row because I've been enjoying it and it's been August so I can wear whatever I want. So I've been enjoying it. So I have a feeling that it was an interaction from the sunscreen. I have worn that sunscreen with this, but I don't know if I wore that sunscreen with those primers with that. The only thing I switched out today was actually that sunscreen, but I'd used it before so I didn't think anything of it. So I was kind of hit me at work that maybe the combination was different. So if you want to see the updated thing, just again, look for the comment. If you've made it to the end of this, I hope that you would like, share, subscribe. I do have a Laura Mercier I'm going to be reviewing. I have some NARS stuff I'm going to be reviewing. So there'll definitely be some things coming that are new or new-ish. <laughs> Might not be brand new because I bought them and didn't have time to review. So I hope I see you again soon and thanks for watching.